We got here. Yep. Can you hear me? Yo, yo. Try to get somewhere stationary. What the hell? Oh, okay. Hit that box. There it is. What's going on with you, man? What's good with you? First and foremost, man, I'm glad you're doing all right, man. You look good, looking healthy, bro. It's good to have a good combo dude. with you. My brother, Pro yeah, Zoom, been telling me a lot about you, man. Good dude I've been hearing, bro. Yeah, man. I've been on Pro, man, for, uh, whoo, for a few good years, man. We met on a, on the set of a film called 17 Days. Yeah, and, uh, yes, sir. And, you know, yeah, man. So, you know, he was like, man, I heard you got bars. Let's go in the studio tonight. And uh, there was another brother that was working on the film behind one of the cameras mm-hmm. named Larry Mervin. And uh, he hollered me at a, on a little lunch break. It was like, yo, man, I got a, I got a, uh, I got an album dropping at midnight. Would you mind taking a listen? I was like, yeah, sure. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that day. <laughs> that day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, uh, but I went in my car, man. And, uh, well, we were out in North Carolina, so whatever car they had for me, they, you know, I pushed play and was blown away. And I was like, damn, bro, you got bars. Especially at 24. I'm 46. I'm from a different era. My, 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 my hip hop is more rooted in lyricism and delivery and, you right. know, saying something where I think hip hop took a turn. It was more, more playful and, you know, okay. popping pills. And it, it just, it got, it got away from the true hip hop that I grew up listening to and I'm a cuss form. It was the right? essence. Was, exactly. You know what I mean? Right. But this mm-hmm. kid felt like he had an old soul, man. And he's mm-hmm. like, man, you gotta hear my album. When I heard it, I was like, wait a minute, this is hip hop. Mm. This is my hip hop, baby. So me and him have been working ever since. Um, and Pro Fluent has also been uh, very influential and uh, 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 how would I say necessary in not only bridging the gap between us, but actually showing me the music business from a oh, DJ's yeah. perspective. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, one of the best friends, too. Oh yeah, one of the best to do it. You know, so so uh, so yeah, I love that dude, man, for making that connection and uh, also for continuing to work with me. Um, we got a couple good things popping recently mm-hmm. that just came into fruition that I'm really excited about. Um, Come on now. You know, I don't, I don't know if he played the song for you that I did for my father. So, he just, you know, uh, was it Legacy? Legacy, yeah. So yeah. a lot of people didn't know, you know, and it's funny, even though I've been in a business as an entertainer for, you know, 30 plus years now. Mm-hmm. Um, Congratulations. Congratulations. People, uh-huh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. Still doing it. Um, a lot of people didn't realize that my brother and I were, were related. You know, my brother Cuba Gooding Jr. You know what I'm saying? Right. People go, yeah, we heard the Gooding, but we don't, we didn't know. Now, most people in the industry know, but Average together. Joe don't put the mm-hmm. two and two. And it's like, I didn't really, you know, we don't see y'all like on red carpets hugging. And, you know, right. Like, what? We didn't know, you know. Exactly. Um, and then a lot of people, you know, also outside of the business didn't know that my father was a singer, Cuba Gooding mm-hmm. Sr., Lead yes. singer of the main ingredient. Everybody plays the fool with his biggest hit. You know what Everybody I mean? oh. plays the fool. Right. Come on, bro. Sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. So, and I would grow up watching him perform, and you know, and he was obviously from another era where it was all about real singing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like when I'm putting on R and B. You know, he was like, "What? No, man, come on." He's he talking about yeah. like, <laughs> bump and grind and all that. This you is different. Right? Yeah, he's just like, "Knock it off, knock it off." You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it was kind of cool, like how hip hop came about. You know, for me, uh, I would hear the old heads telling me, "No, this is music. Y'all doing that hippity hoppity. Y'all know what y'all talking about." And they weren't right. really back to you. They weren't giving hip hop as just dudes of the art form. It ain't just rhyming and putting words together. People say, I rap, and they go, blah, 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 blah. It's like, brother, that ain't, that yeah. ain't it. Hip-hop That's not it. is more to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it got its respect for, it had respect for Absolutely. a while. Like, Tupac, Biggie, that era brought it, like, you know, being from a different entertainment um genre really being an actor when I would say things like, Yeah, I rap back then it was like, Oh, like Tupac? Like like it, it was different. You say it yeah. now, they kinda go, Oh, you rap, huh? Yeah, everybody rap. I guess you yeah, it's rap, a million and like, one. Right. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't it got so watered down and diluted. So I think a lot of these kids, um, you know, like the J. Coles and 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 the uh the Gib, Jib and like there's a lot of cats that oh, I don't yeah, really J-I-D? Talk uh-huh. Oh my God. And I'll be like, wait a minute, these cats, they, they, they boring. They saying something, Absolutely. you know. So it kind of, you know, renewed the fire in me to, just, you know, put some stuff out and really just kind of flex what I have to contribute to hip hop. I'm not right. going to put something out there to do it. You know, I got a day job. Good. I can get money all my other, any other way. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm hey, plenty of other out. ways for, oh, you got it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going <laughs> to just do an album because I think it's cool. I want to show my kids right. I used to rap, like, knock it off. I want to contribute mm-hmm. to the culture, you know, like I've done right. my whole life in the, on the, in the acting game. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. you know, so, so, you know, I put an album out working with Focus from Aftermath, right? And yes. uh, we had since, you know, we had pulled it down. We got it through an issue with 
that ain't long story. But it was, <laughs> what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-release it after I get a better little situation that I'm working on right now. So fuck up okay. Pro Fools. I'm excited about it, and I'm gonna re-release. Nice. re-release I'm gonna re-release that album. Um, I released this song called Legacy, mm-hmm. which you know my father passed in 2017. Right. So when he passed, for sure. Mm-hmm. Right on, bro. When he passed, I had a son. Uh, we had, he did meet my son right before, you know, he passed. Like three, my son was about three months when he passed. That's a blessing. And, yes, sir. And then, yeah, at least he, you know, he met him. And, and that's what made me go, okay, I have to really kind of pick up the torch. You know, I can't mm-hmm. sing like him, <laughs> but my, my lane is hip hop. So, right. You know, that's when I put out that album in 2019. And then with the song Legacy, we released it right on his birthday, right? Uh, the next oh. day, actually, we released it on Friday. His birthday was on the, uh, April 27th, so we released it on 28th. Yeah, man, and when you hear the song, it'll start with Everybody Plays the Fool. We took a sample mm-hmm. of that to start it off with. And then my man, Steven, he's the mogul Ellis. Now, this brother's been in the game a while, one of them unsung heroes, people in the industry know him. I had never met him, uh, but we were linked up. Uh, through my cousin and his wife who said, you know what, you, you, you gotta meet this brother. You gotta meet this brother. So we linked up, he sent me some beats, and we immediately started working. Like everything he played for me was solid. Nice. So we started working, and he says, he said, now check it out, I got a surprise for you. I said, oh really? Yeah, yeah I got a surprise for you once we Ooh, get yeah. this one done. And before we got it done, he said, you know what, I can't wait no more, I gotta send you this. And he sent me the track for Legacy, right? So when I, when I heard it, I was driving and I had to pull over. Kind of like I did with your pop, with the sample on, he sent it with the sample already. Sample with pops on there, bro. So what the the beat that he had, mm-hmm. he had everybody plays full sample. Then mm-hmm. he had my pops going all the way through it, kind of just with his voice, right? And that right there was enough to really. Uh, oh, that's right there for me, right there. That was it, bro. Because mm-hmm. uh, you know, Aaron Neville redid the song, and we heard it, and we go uh, like like as his kids, we listened to that version of it, and we like, come on, man, my pops. Singer, singer. Aaron was cool. Right. No disrespect to Aaron, but it was a different type of song. That's a cover. Like, yeah, he did a, yeah, he did his own vibe. Hey. Right, but oh. a lot of people heard it. It branched it out even more. People like, oh, Aaron, oh, your dad's Aaron Neville. I'm like, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> you was good. You, did, you ain't heard the original. The OG. Thing, you, know what I'm <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when he passed on, my mother, you know, she started a, a production company and they released another version of the song. And again, it was a different vibe. They, they had like a more classical vibe to it. It's, a, it's just different. You know what I mean? They even right. asked me to be on it and I, I gave them a verse and they kind of chopped it up and spread it amongst the song. And it still was like, but where's my dad? You know what I mean? I don't hear my yeah. dad when I hear his music. I need my dad. So when he sent me this and the Pops is singing in the beginning and his voice is going all the way through, I was like, man, give me this pen. So I wrote that thing, right? And then also to further pay homage to him, no one can represent him better than he can, right? So right. this is the story I want to tell about everybody plays the fool. Like Please, as yeah. artists, you never know what song is gonna be a hit, you know. Mm-hmm. And as far as music's concerned, I don't have a hit yet. You know what I mean? I don't know, I don't I, I don't know how that goes, but mm-hmm. I know that a lot of artists, like if you get signed to a label, you give them a bunch of songs, they may pick a song and say, This is gonna be the one, and you kinda go, Really? Well, we'll see. And if the people are responding to it, now, of course, you did your best on every song you do, but you don't know which one's going to be hit. You might think it's going to be something else. I know a lot of right. artists that I remember, their first song, it hit to some people and other people you went, hey, like, I'll say Biggie. Biggie yeah. was one of my favorites. He's my number two on Mount Rush, Mount Rushmore, uh, okay. other than pop, right? Out of five, he's like, he's still yeah. up there with two. I think if he had more okay. albums, he would be, he would, but that's, that's, that's just me, right? So, gotcha. uh, but his first song, Juicy, I wasn't telling it. I wasn't like, yeah, whatever. But a lot of people remember where it came really? from. And it hit it. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, okay. All right, everybody's liking it, whatever. I'm more of a battle rap more in blah, blah, blah. I love pop, da, da. But okay. everything else after that, I was like, oh, Biggie. You right? like warning. You was like more warning, saying, party, and bullshit and all that. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Okay, but, okay. but No, exactly. But mm. so with my father, with this song, out of all the songs he sang, with all the vocal range that he had, his natural tenor, and the way that he could manipulate his voice and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. Everybody plays the fool didn't showcase all of his skills, right? So what he would do whenever he performed it live, mm-hmm. he would break. He would do a breakdown at the end of the song, right? Yeah. And he would say boom, boom, and then he would just hold the note for a long time, extend it, and then run this riff, and then rrr, rrr, do all these runs and whatnot, and his giant is all about you know what I'm saying, and then close the show, bam, and everyone would clap and stand on their feet, and go crazy, okay, right? So yeah, I know that there is footage of this. So if you put in Cuba Gooding Senior main mm-hmm. ingredient live performance, a couple of performances will pull up. Right. So what I told Steven 
uh, Mr. Keys to do is find one of those performances. And what I want to do is while I'm rapping, I want to say, Pops, give him some, and then break the song right down and put that right in the middle of the song. Right? It's run. So yeah. You hear, it's run. So mm -hmm. when you hear Legacy, it's really like the first time me and my father, you know, as he's passed, are doing a song together. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And I just wish he was alive when I could do it, but at the same time, it's me paying homage. Absolutely. So you'll hear the song. The time, right? you'll, hear the, you'll hear the Everybody Plays the Fool. Then I spit. Then you hear him do his riff. Then I spit again. Then we end with everybody boo. And then it's, you know what I mean? So, so that's, that's the song, man. I'm, I'm, I'm real, yeah, I'm real, I'm real jazzed about it. And dude is such a talented producer that it, it just slaps, man. So it's, it's, it's a no brainer. But we're excited, man. I said it to my brother and he's doing backflips literally. <laughs> he's so excited about it. He's been sharing it and showing it to people. He sent me oh, a video of him, play, of him playing at the, playing at the club or something yeah. like that, wasn't it? Yeah, There's I've a seen couple in the club. He's got one, he was in the club and he's listening to it, but he got one where he said, I don't know, I ain't shared this with nobody yet. So I mean, uh -huh. you, you, you shouldn't have seen this one. But there's a clip of Drake out to lunch and with the, you can hear him bobbing with the, with the phone up to his head and you hear my, my lyrics coming out. And my brother turns the phone okay. on himself and said, uh-huh, you see, I'm playing it for people. I'm like, no, okay, go ahead. Okay. You know what I mean? So drinking. Bro, out there shopping. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just shopping. Like, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, it wasn't even released then. I just sent uh -huh. it to him. I wanted him to hear it. You know? Oh, and that I, you was know, leaked? Like, yeah. Like, uh, this is the era of family chat. You know what I mean? So we have like a family group chat. It was like me, him, his kids, my wife. Mm -hmm. There's a couple people all in it. And we always share stuff. And when I put the sample of just the beat in there, everybody went crazy. Like, finally. You know what I mean? At least we, this, yep. this is representing Pops the right way. Yeah. You know what I need to give them the lyrics. As soon as I put the lyrics on there, they were just like, man, stop. This thing is crazy. Give it up. This is Omar Gooding, and you're listening to The Doc from The Documentary Show. Oh, I wanted to ask you, like, Coming from, cause you, you mentioned your dad, you mentioned your brother, but you have a, such a talented family. Like, I will put y'all up there with, like, a Wayans or a, a Jackson. Like, a lot of people don't know that everybody in your family does something, like, entertainment. Everybody gets down, man. I mean, even my sister, she does stand-up comedy. She's been in front. She's been in movies. She's been on sitcoms. My brother's oldest son, uh, I'm sorry, youngest son, Mason, is an absolute monster. This boy is talented and good-looking, got some chops. He's uh, He's got a series on Disney. He's mm -hmm. part of the screen franchise. His name is Mason Gooding. Scream? Look him up. Mason. The wow. Scream. The new Scream yeah. first. The oh, new Scream. No, so far yeah. like Part like five and six, he gets like mm -hmm. killed in one and then comes back and six. Go see the newest one. He's like, he's a dude in that. He's an absolute okay, man. That's hard. Talented fan. Like, was there any pressure coming up to want to be something, or was that just always in your mind that you were going to do acting? It, well, it, it, it's kind of like, you know, I got two sons now. One's six, the other mm -hmm. one's three, and I already see that I ain't going to be able to stop what's in them. You know what I mean? And that's just how it was with us. We always sang. We always, my mother was a praying mother. She always prayed. We always sang. Amen. She prayed things into existence. We went through trials and tribulations. My pop was a hit in the 70s. I was born in the 70s, you understand me? So the money and the fame and all that stuff was gone by the time I was about five because he went to, he went to Africa. Mm. And uh, during oh, apartheid, really? it was a big no-no. And mm. uh, when he came back to the U.S., he was blacklisted. He could he blackball. He could play nowhere. They took his screens and everything. So he had to start over again. So when he wow. started over from the late 70s, early 80s, we went from houses to homeless. Like, literally. And me, my brother, my sister, my mom, and a big-ass Great Dane were in a bobcat driving through California trying to find our, our actual home. Uh, we, we, wound, we wound up landing right in about North Hollywood, that area. Oh. And that's where, you know, I was about, about 10 years old. My brother got into acting, and then I found my way in by picking up a script for him one day, and his agent saw me smiling and having clear diction and talking. <laughs> and they said, I was you out on the road, and I just booked right away. You know what I mean? It took me two nice. years to land my first series. So I did a series for Nickelodeon called Wild Come on now. You know what I'm talking about? That joint ran for Yo. three years. As soon as it ended, I landed mm. Hang on Mr. Cooper. <laughs> That ran for the next five years. Let's as go. soon as that ended, I landed smart guy. He's a smart guy. guy. Yo. About, by the time that's done, I'm 24 years old. You know what I'm saying? I started when I was nine. Ran, 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 boom, boom. And then I get a call from John Singleton talking about he got a script called Baby Boy. Hello. Baby Boy. I gotta show you I was done, baby boy. You gotta learn to one hit a quit. Come on, you bro. That's I'm that's on. a legacy so, in itself right there, bro. Come on now. So it was never pressure. Like even when my brother won, uh, and it's funny because people always ask about the Oscar, and it was like, uh oh. So when your brother won, you were like, oh snap, hope I get one. Da da da. I was like, uh, no, that's not how Oscars worked back then. Anyway, mm -hmm. when he won, the whole community won. We were happy that we got an Oscar, let alone right. me and the Gooding. 
We knew everybody that was the Oscar for that decade. Like <laughs> it wasn't until recently that everybody getting one. But like back then, we everybody knew once he won, that was it. Who's the next uh, one that got Oscar after him? You had to wait another ten years or somebody got one. But I was happy that, that we got it. You know what I mean? And it was in right. blood. So I was like, I was like, oh yeah, you know. But if I get one, it'll be in God's timing. But you know, you see how that was too. Where there's a lot of for a lot of uh, actors that do win an Oscar for one thing, and then you see something else that you think is way more phenomenal that they don't even get nominated for, and you'd be like, how does right. this shit work? So, you just That's never know what's going to do. Exactly. You know, people saw the Baby Boy performance, like, oh, you should have got Oscar like Netflix. They ain't one. They ain't just handing them out like that, bro. That's not how it goes. You know, look at Hell. Hell. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He got one here, and then he had to wait the long gap, and then they gave one for that. I was like, yeah, what about Malcolm X? What, what about this and that? And all he's like, what, how can he get Oscar for that? Nope. That just, had to be crooked. Uh, yes, so, indeed. Up to the what? To say the powers that be. Yes, sir, man. Hello. Introducing Hustle House Apparel, where style meets hustle. From comfortable streetwear to head-turning statement pieces, we got you covered for every occasion. But it's not just about the clothes. It's about embracing the hustle, the drive, and the ambition within you. Visit our Etsy store to explore our latest collection and take advantage of our limited time sales and discounts. Hustle House Apparel, where style meets hustle. Join the movement today. Give it up, it's Omar Gooding, and you're listening to The Doc on The Documentary Show. Now, growing up, you said you mentioned growing up in the 70s. You were growing up in Los Angeles. A lot of people don't understand that was a completely different way of living. Like, on the West Coast in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, compared yeah. to the rest of the U.S., y'all had your own lifestyle that was going on on the West Coast. You talk about how it was coming up out there, juggling that family, and then, like you said, having Pops go from this to, to having to start over. Like, what was that like? Yeah. Rebuild and then playing your seat. Well, I mean, you know, you know, for me, uh, you know, I was five years old when mm-hmm. when it was rough on us, right? So mm-hmm. it was like an adventure to me. Living in the car, going yeah. to hotels and shelters. It was like a new place every day. <laughs> Drop in toys and go, bad check, next row. I was just like, this is, this is fun. Yep. We go to hotels and Poor life. <laughs> and it was probably harder on my siblings than me because they were 10 years older than me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So they're like in their teens going, damn, I got to tell the friends we got to move and make a new friend. That's embarrassing. And that's this that's and that's different. the third one. I was like, this is fun as hell. So mm-hmm. it wasn't hard like that for me, even though I would see it wear on my mother. And I knew mm-hmm. that I had to find a way to get her off her feet, so to speak, because she had to work two jobs, stressing mm-hmm. about driving and getting the kids and this and that and the third and blah, blah, blah. So I said, man, I got to land a series because I know if I get a TV show, she can quit, manage me, and we'll be set. I could pay the rent. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that was like my drive for three years from nine to 12. So that was my mm-hmm. having to grow up early. You know what I'm saying? That was my like, okay, you got to be the man of how my brother did what he could. But like, it was like I said, it was 10 year gap. So when he got 19, 20 years old, he had to move on and do his thing. I'm like, man, man. So I got to mm-hmm. be like the man of the house. You know what I right. mean? Like, I got to be the breadwinner here. You know what I'm saying? So it was step a lot up. of having to mature, having to step up early. Um, and then it was, it was also, you know, being out here on the West Coast too, you know, I was always, I always had a sense of, of the people around me. Like I've always been a leader. So even I was, I was like the youngest in whatever group I was in, as far as like crews, be it school, be it whatever it is, you know, they would always look up to me regardless. Where are we going? What's the next move? What's this and that? So I didn't have a follower's mentality ever. I wouldn't get into trouble because I followed some dude into some bulls. I came up with dudes around me that were from the street because it made sense to me. We would fight and we would go out and do what it is amongst each other and we would go out and I would I would be comfortable because I know that they can take care of themselves. So that means they had my back if some shit popped off. You understand right. I me? Mean? So people always say, why don't you hang with oh you work with such and such and this actor and blah blah blah. I'm not going out and finding out trying to find out if uh you know, Leonardo DiCaprio could fight. Like, I'm not, I'm not hanging out with them in the street. I need some cash that got my back, you know what I'm saying? That I know I'm with you, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, it culminated in me getting caught with some weapons and having to do, like, you know, I didn't do no jail time. And we got locked up and bailed out, and it was like the news for like 24 hours That's while I was doing Hanging with Mr. Gooper. And it was like, mm-hmm. uh-oh, uh, hanging with Gooper, hanging with hanging in jail or whatever that line was, oh, yeah. you know. They flipped I, it. You know, make my, right. And I had to make mm-hmm. my apologies, but it was heartfelt because I wasn't out really doing no crazy shit. I just happened to mm-hmm. have weapons on me. I was more of a preventive type of, like, you know, just have them type of defense. thing. Defense. No That's all defense. Kind of, mm-hmm. That's it, but... I didn't have, you know, the wit to, you know, to hide it or have a stash spot in your car. I was, you know what I mean? I'm trying to like, <laughs> but I'm just mm-hmm. speaking to the fuck. And it was, you know, we got, we went to a valet parker and then, you know, watched valet the car. He saw the gunner, the Mac called the police. They pulled us over, brought like SWAT and all this crazy, you know, got arrested That's in front scary. of a nightclub. They throwing bricks and 
stuff at the window like I was Tupac. I'm like, what are y'all tripping on? I'm just, a, you know what I mean? Calm down. But they were like, no. Nah, turned like, to a whole riot, bro. And, uh, Hell but, you no. know, that went away and, and, you know, and I kept my nose clean because, you know, that's not what I was about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just, again, it was just an unfortunate situation, but it taught me to be smarter. And, um, you know, that's just kind of how I navigated through, through life. I just, you know, I kept people around me that were, that were just real, authentic people. You know what I'm saying? But not yes. bad influence. They were more the type that they knew they, you know, for lack of a better word, I was their bread and butter, so to speak. Like, they knew that I had something, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I mean, you I was yeah. I was on so they were like, mm-hmm. we had to look out for him. That's why I don't get these guys that, you know, I don't want to bash other celebrities or these athletes that get into stuff with because of the people around them because it doesn't make sense to me. Like, why right. would you want to bring him down, especially if he's your meal ticket? But when you want to exactly. protect him from yourself, I guess that's to. just that blows my mind, man. You know, and then, anyway, we can go in and on about that. But, um, you know, so I got that's a whole story. Boy, Oh. You feel me? And when I got the script for Baby Boy, it was like, wait a minute, how the hell did he know that I could pull this off? Because other than that one incident that was only on the news for 24 hours, how did he know that I'm anywhere about it? How does he know that I have oh. that in any way, bro? Oh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Because I'm like, I'm yeah. looking at Hanging with Mr. Cooper and all these other shows, and, and I, I see Baby Boy. I'm like, how the f- who did he have to go to for inspiration for this? You see, you got to get up on him close. Draw back. Not too far, though. And for the nose, I'm out. Preferably the nose. This is soft. Preferably, huh? You know what I mean. Don't fuck. Oh! Yeah, that's it, baby boy. Like, even Cash was talking to me. Like, man, we heard you got that John Singleton movie with the, with the, you playing the, you, you playing the Sweet Pea, the dick that's about it, the whole, like, how? Good luck. You know, they just got a roll. Yeah, but they, look, but they didn't see the film. This was, you know, when I was just, you know, we were still making it. This was like in 99, I should say, uh, right before we started filming it. They were looking at mm-hmm. like, well, good luck with that. And I was just like, all right, that's fuel. Um, I had gotten in some instances and some situations on the streets by being mm-hmm. the kind of guy that just goes out and just has people around me and things happen. And right. they kind of mirrored some of the instances that happened to, you know, Tyrese's character. You know what I'm saying? Not to me personally, mm-hmm. but to someone close to me and even though I was there and it was a I couldn't go all right let's get guns boy we gonna ride out of that because I knew what I had to protect you know what I'm saying priorities come on Mm -hmm. yeah I took care of the situation but I never really got closure for it I Mm -hmm. never could just go out and go what I can find let's go line you know what I mean Mm -hmm. when I read the script and I was like you mean I could play a a character and kind of therapeutically get all of that off that I got bottled up in me and vent, you know what I mean? In another right. life, I could have been that dude. If this, if we, if we didn't set a homeless, instead of finding a, acting as an outlet and having things to lose, I could have mm. not. I could have just been a statistic. I could have hung with nut. the boys and said, "Nah, we ain't coming here no blah, 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 nah. Let's go find a spot in the hood. Let's do this and who knows? I could have been that exact dude. Right. Ended up jailed, got out looking for a job, frustrated, talking through his teeth. I could have been that dude. So. It's just another side of it. It's funny, dude. Every time, you know, I'm a human. Something happens, and that switch gets flipped. People go, "Oh, he just turned into sweet pea," you know. <laughs> and it made me laugh because I go, "All right, that's funny that you said that, but it helps me calm down." Like, okay, uh, man, relax, bro. Like you, you turn it into you're a, a yeah. Side of it. yeah, but it's just a different, different side. I'd rather mm. laugh and have fun all the time. Like, why? Mm. Who would want to have a good time? You know what I mean? Like hard, yeah, right. bro. When as life be, becomes life, sometimes mm-hmm. things don't go your way and right. people react how they react. You they know, do. I even have a bad habit of holding stuff in. Well, mm-hmm. I did anyway. Now I know I got to just release it immediately because that's toxic. You wind up taking it from the wrong person. You can't let it Absolutely. go. But I had a bad habit of that and I would freaking explode. And mm-hmm. I would they'd be, what's wrong with this dude? I was like, yeah, well, I had a, I had a lot I was going through. Trust me, I had to let this slide once. I let it slide twice. Now I've lost my shit. Now it's, it's a problem. Well, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now yeah. I know when it's when there's a problem, address it immediately. Nip Don't that let it build up. Yes, you know sir. I mean? it's, it's the relationship with your wife, your, per, your person, your friend, whatever it is, your business relationship, whatever. Uh, let's have a conversation about this right now before it goes overboard because right. I know how I am. And I'll go ahead mm-hmm. and take that one on the chin and take that one. And then when it's flip time, people get confused. This is, where did Sweet Pea come from? I don't know. Where all this, yeah, right. where all this, this aggression come yeah, from? Right. right. I'm like, well, and then I got to explain myself in handcuffs. No, thank you. Give it up. It's Omar Gooding. You're listening to the doc in the documentary. You know, uh, you know, I waited until I was 40 years old to start having kids. So now that I'm 46 and my oldest is six years old, mm-hmm. it's funny how I have all these lessons and these things to teach them and whatnot, but I have patience. 
Because at 20 something, I couldn't have did it. I, that's why I didn't have kids. That's the time. I could have done it. No, thank you. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But now, you know, there's so much, and I, and I see them in me. I was that same way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand how people, well, anyway, I mean, lots we can talk about and unpack about fathers and sons and daughters sure. and whatnot. But, like, I just, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me how you would willingly not be in your child's life if you want to, if you need to guide them. I didn't try to blame somebody else for how they raised them. That just, just makes that just baffles the hell out of me. You know, my pops, I love him to death. Mm. But he had to go. He, his thing was, I had to go get the money. Mm. But he was go. always there. You know, we had a great relationship. He was always there when I really needed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, and I would, he led by example. So I would see him perform on stage. I would watch him backstage, how he handled his people. He would be on stage. If something was wrong and didn't sound right, he'd stop the whole show and be like, man, get on this. I need you here. Six, seven. Yes, that's you. And go. Back to the show. Like, I want Make to like him this. Come on. Perfection. That's, per- that's mama mentality, baby. Let's go. You feel me? And whether it was uh, on stage or behind stage, dealing with the people, he just commanded respect and his presence. And I was just like, I would just soak up game, soak up game. Yeah. A lot of people would see it and then just not respect it or not take knowledge. You know what I mean? So, that's it. That's 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 a boss mentality for you to to sit there and actually soak it up, bro. That's that's one. That's once again getting back to the legacy, man. And I'm glad that you recognize that. And all these these stories that you're telling me, these lessons got me thinking of your new role and uh, on Disney Plus that Saturdays mm-hmm. when yeah, you play um, Hal Johnson. You the pops on there. So like, do you get to yeah. put some of these real life lessons into the TV show as well? Or, like, how does that go? Yeah, I mean, they they had all the script written, uh, but they do let us play. Now, this is the first time I've been on a production that really um, allows us to flourish where some of these productions of this caliber, you would normally think it'd be like, stick to the script, stick to the script. But what they'll do is they'll have to the script for a few takes, and then once they have what they need, they'll let us play. Then when I watch the finished product, I see that they used a lot of the stuff that we kind of improvised with, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. They loving our, you know, our veteran, you know, me and me and Golden. Shout out to Brooks, who's just one of oh, the yeah. best things to work with ever. Her and really? I, you would think that we knew each other. You would think we knew each other. Mm. We did a chemistry read because this, this thing did like in the end of 2021. Like it was mm. this about three years that we've known each other because mm. we were, we had to do, uh, you know, during the pandemic, everything was virtual. Right. The, the, when I met the, the producers and the writers and we did a read, it was in my room. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, everything was virtual. Then it was like, all right, we want to do a chemistry read, match you up with some of the other one. First one I met. Was golden. We talk and hit it off right away. Everybody's like, "Man, on each other's like this is the first time." Just like this, you talking right there, you know. And That's you rough. see it on screen. Mm-hmm. It's strong, and she's such a character. Her, her her talent is so strong that it helped me excel. And then I would go extra, and then she would come right up, and we would climb up, but we know how to give and take. That's hard. Steel you know, sharpening steel. Oh man, exactly. And then with the kids, these kids are some of the most talented young people I've ever worked mm-hmm. with in my life. You know, they would look at us and say, ask us about growing up and this and that in the industry and so forth and so on. But never was like, how should I do this? How should I do this? They just go. You know, they right. had acting coaches and stuff like that to fine tune them on set, but they didn't need, you know what I mean? And it was a huge mm-hmm. workload for them. They had to learn how to rotate different routines every, every week. They had a different routine that they learned on skate. And it's not a skate, and their line and their own food. You know what I mean? And it's authentic, man. We filmed in Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. Shout out to yeah. Imeria and Josh, our coaches, that just had us looking smooth as hell on the ice when we did our thing. Had them girls looking polished. You know, my son on Damn. the show, Jermaine, and his best friend on the show, Tanya, these, these boys are becoming stars, bro. Stars. Mm. I was like, they remind me. Mole uh, and on on smart they have smart that, that it that when they're like okay what they go do oh all right uh, uh-huh. mole bouncing for me and Jay Wee so uh, it's strong Taking man the, the, the girls man they're just awesome so proud of them. oh Bro, man dope. So proud of that's the girls numbers are good back is good that is good man and shot and hats off man to the creator in advance junior you know mm-hmm. who had the big you know this came to him now it actually started with Mark Mark. Now, Marce yeah. Martin, if y'all know her from, she was the youngest girl on Black. Now, yes. 16 years old, when she was 16, started a production company with her parents called Genius Entertainment. They came up with an idea about Beast. a black girl uh, with sickle cell being a skater, 
She mm. sells it, brings on Norman Jr., which we know from Roll Bounce, Girlfriends, and so much, and goes. He's now the showrunner. He mm. came to him and said, look, we need you to show something different than me on Disney. We don't want to say, oh, there's a Disney show, and it's like every other Disney show, all bright and a little too exaggerated. We want it grounded and real, <laughs> kind of like Blackish. Yep. So we took right. that Blackish thing, so we took the Blackish format with the cutaways and whatnot, and this and this. It's strong, man. It's strong. So it's like anything you've ever seen on Disney. It also is streaming on Disney Plus, which just goes to show that it's not a typical <laughs> Disney show. And, um, and it's phenomenal, man. We just aired. I literally was watching it last man. This pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they put it together nice. And they definitely a lot of, did. Uh, a, a lot of fun. Introducing Hustle House Apparel, where style meets hustle. From comfortable streetwear to head-turning statement pieces, we got you covered for every occasion. But it's not just about the clothes. It's about embracing the hustle, the drive, and the ambition within you. Visit our Etsy store to explore our latest collection and take advantage of our limited time sales and discounts. Hustle House Apparel, where style meets hustle. Join the movement together. Give it up, it's Omar Gooding, and you're listening to The Doc on The Documentary Show. Well, Omar, good, man. You are definitely doing your thing. Like you said, coming from a talented family, doing things since a youngin'. You got music that you've been doing. You're working with Profluent. Shout out to DJ Profluent doing his thing. But he let me in on a little secret, too, as well. You, uh, you've you been you've been taking a dive into the stand-up comedy thing, man. Talk to me about that. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's I was about to say, I've been my hand into so many things. See, I used to run a room uh, in Hollywood uh, called the Comedy Dojo on Santa Monica, right in the heart of uh, uh And the cool thing was, you know, I ran it for a while, and then I had to do some traveling. So that shut down the pandemic. That closed some things down. My sister, um, who has today is my brother one year apart, so, uh, exactly to the day. So, uh, uh she wanted to do a, a birthday party. So she said, I mean, she does stand-ups. Like, uh, we bring some comics and so forth and so on. So I made some calls and we put on this show for her and it just kind of lit the fire again. And we're like, okay, let's find us a new venue and let's just start doing this up and get some people out. Why not? You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, what I do is, what I did was, well, I'll be the presenter, Omar Gooding Present. Now our new show is the Omar Gooding Present Funny Comedy Show, right? Nice. So, we're like, well, all you have to do really is get a host, the host will host it, book the comics, so forth and so on, and at the very end, just do your Russell Simmons walk up there and say, thanks for coming out, God bless. It's like, okay, that's great, so but I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to get up in here. So uh, what I, my format is, the spins, I come out, I talk to the crowd, and then I bring out my host. You know what I mean? He runs the show, seamless ends, I get back up on stage, thank everybody for coming out, we take the pictures, and then it's done. So did was with me being the first one to come out on stage, I test it out. You know what I mean? Work the crowd a little bit, see how everybody can try some jokes. If right. it's working, keep going. If it's quiet, time for your host. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. you know what I mean, locked in. And it just got longer and longer and longer. It led to me uh, hosting a uh, showcase in Detroit uh, a few weeks ago. It was my first taste at like three walls of me being the guy, you know, hey. running it just in the crowd. Uh. So it was all improv. Nothing was written. All I had was a list yeah. of the people that I had to bring up. Tell them, uh. oh, we're ahead of schedule. Can you buy us three minutes? I'm like, say less. There you, you know what I mean? Off and the top. Like, like, yeah, I do this, the, the stand up. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, a crowd with a microphone is over with. That's me my whole life. You know what I mean? That's, that's, right, right, that's right. easy. But it's not to disrespect Stan because it's really, it's really uh, 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 it's difficult. So you got to read the room. Sometimes you bomb. Sometimes jokes work. Sometimes jokes don't. So you have to build your set. You know what I mean? So when my sister started, she showed me how they do it. And I was like, what do you mean? I took a class. And in this class, the first day, um, she would try some jokes. Whatever worked, she kept. Whatever didn't. So the next class, she kept the ones that worked. Mm-hmm. And started with some new ones. And it's just a process of emotion until you have a full set. You know yes. what I'm saying? And then you can a little bit, do this and that, but you always have your jokes that you go back to. So there was a structure and a science to it. So, you know, uh, however long, you just got to get your set together. And so now that I got one, 
Yeah, it's easy peasy. Yeah, it's all. It's tight. So, uh, uh, you got a tight one. Okay. Once again, it's all coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Good. we got a show. It's, it's locked in. I got comedian Warren V. I got DJ Psych on the ones and twos that come out there. We rock. We last night. This was my still got these sunglasses on. Uh, and it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I had a good time. I'm about to go back to Los Globos uh, on yeah. Sunset Boulevard. So we're going to be there tonight. We're going to see Bubba Dub. Bubba Dub got a show. You know what I mean? Snoop, everybody's yeah. supposed to be coming out. So, you know, I'm going to be up there, man. Kicking it. Kicking it, man. That's yes, what's uh, up, bro. But I'm going to holler at you again once we get this next part. I'm too. Yeah, we need to. Got to check in again, man. Matter of fact, and what we on the music tip. Oh, go yeah. ahead and um, introduce this legacy joint to the folks. We're going to play that for them right quick. So this is Legacy by Omar Gooding, featuring the vocals of the one and only Faith Jesus Gooding. Yup, that's my pops. Yeah, that's my pops, man. You ain't know. Nah. Next thing you gon' tell me is you ain't know about my bigger bro.